Hello again everyone. Well today I'm going to be having a look and see if I can work out what's going on with the split charge circuit for the leisure battery in our van. Now this isn't an instructional video, I literally have very little idea of what I'm doing here. I'm going to have to try and work it out as I go along. So if you're looking for an instructional video, I'm sorry this is probably not the one for you. But it is going to be a vlog of my progress in trying to uh, get to the bottom of what's going on with our particular van. Right, let's go and take a look. Now, when we bought the van, there was no leisure battery in the van at all. There was just the vehicle battery. It wasn't this one, it was a much smaller one. And I've had to uh, replace that. Actually, I've replaced that twice in the time we've had the van. We've had an issue with the alternator overcharging that boiled up and ruined the previous battery. I've added a leisure battery. There's a metal cradle already here for the leisure battery and I've added a leisure battery and used the existing cables that were just wound up around the front here to connect it up. Now the fella who sold us the van did suggest to us that he only used the vehicle battery, he only used the car battery to run all the accessories for his camping trip but that seems uh, less than ideal to me. So we have this ZIG unit here and as you can see you can switch it from car battery to caravan battery which uh, means the leisure battery obviously and with that leisure battery I've added under the bonnet we, we've run that for a couple of years quite happily uh, as it is really. But the issue is it doesn't appear to charge either when we're on electric hookup or as we're driving along off the alternator in the van. Over the course of a camping trip, it does get steadily flatter. Now, of course, there's not a great deal in the van that does run off the battery, really. There's um, the lights, of course, and the pump, which uh, pumps and pressurises the water tank, and the aux, which only really appears to do the electronics on the carver water heater, as far as I can make out. It doesn't seem to be connected to the fridge. The fridge seems to work regardless of whether that aux switch is on or off. Now the fridge you can't really run on the leisure battery. As soon as you switch that over to the leisure battery the low battery warning light comes on on the ZIG unit even if the battery is fully charged. The battery isn't fully charged at the moment but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'll put the ZIG over to caravan battery and saying normal and everything. I won't put the AUX switch down, I'll leave that off, but I'll put the fridge onto the battery setting. And uh, actually, I might be telling you nonsense, look, because that's not affected it at all. Maybe you've turned the AUX on. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> what I said was rubbish. The, the, the AUX does have to be down for the fridge to run on the leisure battery, but as you can see, immediately drains too much out of it. So what I'll tend to do is before we go away on a camping trip, I'll connect the van to the electrical hookup outside the house and I'll run this lead into the uh, front seat there, open the quarter light and connect up my little battery charger here to the leisure battery and make sure the leisure battery is fully charged before we go away. And of course, if we're away on a longer stay, I can do that on a campsite that has electrical hookup as well. So if I notice the battery getting low, I can top it up like that. But of course, that's not really how it should be. It should charge up off the alternator on the van as we drive along. And it really should charge, I think, off the electric hookup when we're plugged in on site. So what's going on? Well, uh, electrics are really not my thing, so uh, it's my, my least favourite thing to try and work with and try and work out what's going on. I've had a look at George's video, which I'll link to here, which does explain the split charging of the alternator on these older vans. So uh, with that in mind, let's take a look under the bonnet and see what I've got. 
Right, so as I said before, we've obviously got the vehicle battery here and we've got the leisure battery there. There's a fuse correctly on the live side of the leisure battery, so that's protected okay. And it's fixed into a nice cradle. Now these wires from the leisure battery, they disappear into the front panel of the van through this hole here. And I believe that's them popping out there. Now that looks like a, a far from original fitment. I doubt Citroen are in the habit of using these chocolate block things. I could be wrong, I don't know. And from there, it changes to this sort of brown and cream cable and this red cable, and they disappear off. Uh, it's hard for you to see, but they disappear off behind the battery. I can't really see where they go. I might have to take the battery out to see where they go. But first, I think it would be sensible to verify that my assumption is correct that that battery isn't charging off the alternator. So um, I'm going to measure the voltage on both batteries at the moment, just standing statically. The leisure battery hasn't been recharged after our last trip. I know that's far from ideal. You probably shouldn't store the batteries um, without charging them. Although, I don't, I don't know really, maybe it's okay. I don't think it's, I think it's deeply discharged. I'm, um, yeah, a little bit uncertain about that, but uh, whether I should charge it as soon as I get home or charge it before we go away. Generally tend to charge it before we go away simply because when we come home, it's usually a Sunday night, we want to get the van unloaded, back off the drive and around the corner here to the garage. And, you know, there's just not the opportunity to charge it up. Before we go away, obviously, we put it on the front, load it all up night before. The van can sit on charge all overnight and we leave with a fully charged battery. Anyhow, let's have a look at both batteries in their current state. Right, so uh, vehicle battery first. With nothing else going on, we have... 12.7 volts leisure battery next nothing else going on we have 12.28 volts right so we've got the engine running now so the voltage going from the uh, vehicle batteries is a nice healthy 14 volts which is about what it should be with the alternator charging the vehicle battery so moving over to the leisure battery, we'll try that and we've got, yeah, the same 12.2 volts going in. Now it does occur to me, looking at uh, George's video, I wonder whether we have to have the ZIG unit switched over to caravan battery for it to charge perhaps. So let's leave that switched over and see if our battery is charging now. No, we're still getting the same 12.2 volts. So that to me seems pretty conclusive that we are not charging our leisure battery off the alternator as I suspected. So the question is, why not? Now I think what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to go through one of these relays like in George's video and that should be what works the fridge and according to George's video there's a relay that does the fridge and the battery charging. Now the fridge does seem to work on the 12 volt so I don't know why the charging wouldn't why well, there's two relays this i wonder if this cream and brown wire is the same cream and brown wire that comes off this chocolate block it does seem to head in that direction but it doesn't it, it curves off and goes back around behind the battery i think we're gonna have to end up taking the vehicle battery out and seeing if we can see where those wires go but in the meantime, I'm going to have a quick look through the wadge of paperwork that came with the van to see if I can work out what should happen. But first, I'd like to share with you a short message that we've received from Yvonne at Let's Go Somewhere Travels. 
who was the winner of one of our channel t-shirts in the recent competition. Hi Alex and Nikki, received your t-shirt off your competition. It's a little bit big, doesn't matter though, I'll still wear it. Thank you for the sticker as well. So yeah, if you haven't already checked out their channel, then pop over there and take a look. There's heaps of good stuff on there. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you'd like to grab one for yourself, there is a selection of sizes available on my Etsy shop, which as always is linked in the description below. Okay, well, we have amongst our paperwork, we have this, which is the uh, Citroen Dealer Network book from 1990. I imagine if you rocked up at any of these dealers now and showed them this van that they'd give you a sort of a Gallic shrug, take a bite of their cheese, wave their galois at you and uh, shrug a bit. But uh, I'm not sure you get much help. I've got, uh, well, this is the Jumpstart pack I bought for the van, so that's irrelevant. Instructions for the bog, I don't think they're particularly relevant. Uh, instructions for the oven, which I think has been retrofitted by a previous owner. We spoke about this oven before. Um, I think that obviously used to be a cupboard. In fact, I've got the door. The van still came with the door that would go on there. Um, but we love having the oven. Anyway, that's uh, not relevant to this, is it? So let's uh, put that to one side. This is the, um, the sort of aftermarket handbook thing i've got a digital copy of this as well it's it's okay it's not great it's okay but uh it doesn't really help us with our current problem this is the paperwork that came with the water pump i bought so that's not relevant either and this is the base vehicle maintenance guide so again that's not particularly handy for us but what I have got is the eldest touring caravan and motorhome owners handbook. And in here we have the relevant section, description of caravan systems. So we have the internal power supply. And it says, with the exception of the Wisp eldest caravans, are equipped with provision for a caravan battery and distribution system. The main features of the system are full automatic electronic charging. But it says, with the exception of the WISP Eldest Caravans. And if you look at the diagram, you've got control panel for the XL GTX and Crusader, which I think are caravan models, and the control panel for the WISP. Now that looks like our control panel. Yeah. That looks very much like our control panel, does it not? So I think what that's telling us is that our van is the exception and hasn't got full automatic electronic charging control. I think. Now it does say an internal power supply wiring diagram is included on the model specification sheet supplied with this handbook, which of course haven't got. Now, interestingly, we also have this section further on, which says looking after your eldest motorhome and it describes motorhome electrics. It says your eldest motorhome is fitted with a converter charger unit. For full information about the system and how to operate it, please refer to the manufacturer's instructions supplied. Hmm. And of course, it also says some eldest motorhomes are fitted with an auxiliary battery, which is automatically charged when the engine is running or when coupled to a 240 volt main supply. So I suppose the question is, did our van come with a leisure battery or not? That wiring does look a little bit homemade, doesn't it? As if somebody's added that afterwards. Maybe they added that cradle afterwards as well. But then again, the control panel has a switch for leisure battery, for, for caravan battery, so I, I don't really know. Also got this interesting um, Paragraph. Some models of Eldest Motorhome provide the facility internal wiring terminating in a positive and negative cable to install a battery of your choice, which will be fitted in the bottom of the wardrobe. Hmm. Uh, if you intend to fit your own battery in relevant wire, it will be necessary to install a split charge relay, which should be wired into the charging circuit, ensuring both batteries are charged and preventing the vehicle battery being drained when the engine is not running. 
I guess we come back to the question of what those two relays are for under the bonnet. Now also in here we have a manual for a some sort of battery charger. It hasn't actually got any pictures in it so I don't know what I'm looking for but I'm pretty sure there is no charger. Um, I mean it talks about Connecting crocodile tips to the battery in the following order and connecting the negative lead to the chassis. Battery must be positioned. So that sounds kind of like the sort of charging arrangement we use at the moment anyway, doesn't it? Now a couple of people have said if you have a battery charger it should be in the wardrobe where the mains electric hookup and distribution thing comes in. Now, if we can fight our way to the back of the wardrobe. Yeah, all I've got really is this little distribution board. And then that's wired straight up through this flexi trunking into the back of the Zig unit there. Now, I think I recall seeing a post on the Talbotok forum as to what these relays will be. So might go and have a look, see if I can find that old post. And I think I've also seen a post about what this is. It's got uh, stuff in it, look. Look at that, all sorts of stuff. Uh, don't know what that is, but <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go and look it up, because I'm sure I've seen a post as to what this is. Right, well, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything too definitive about what those relays are. So I'm going to have a little bit of lunch and then I'm going to pop back out and I'll disconnect the vehicle battery and see if we can see where those wires are going. Right, well, with that battery out of the way, it is a little bit clearer. We've got uh, coming out of this side of that chocolate block, we've got this brown and cream wire. We've also got a red and blue wire. Now the brown and cream one does, as we said before, disappear off and it goes into this sort of multiple connector, which is a basically an earth really, isn't it? That That's earthing onto this earthing point here which again is where the main earth for the vehicle battery goes. And we've then got uh, the other side of our chocolate, like this red and blue. Well, the red disappears off and uh, goes, where does that go? That goes off into this bit of tubing, which disappears way under i'm guessing that's going off underneath the vehicle so that's going probably back to the zig unit i would say at a guess yeah i'm under the vehicle now and i'm thinking that that's it there isn't it going disappearing off back under the vehicle towards the back so yeah i reckon that's going off to the zig unit now the other wire is this blue and brown wire and that goes off down into this tube which whirls its way around and goes up to well it goes to both relays really doesn't it so that i think would be this wire coming out here going to this first relay so this first relay here i think is our split charge relay but that does not seem to be working. Now, of course, off this earth point, we have another brown and cream wire, and that works its way roundy, roundy, round into that tube again. And we've got the brown and cream coming to this relay. So, is this a dodgy relay, is the question. So really, those other wires going in we know that the the cream and white one is an earth and we know the brown and blue one is a live a live a positive kind of thing <laughs> yeah going to the battery so that goes to the battery so those two go to the battery the, the cream and the brown and the blue and brown so the red and the blue must be coming from to alternator somehow 
So, at this end of the tube, we have two reds and a blue. Well, no, that's our blue and brown, isn't it? That's not a blue. So, I'm not really sure what's going on there. But they should be, I think, coming from the alternator. But, looking at it, everything coming out of there, with the exception of that one blue wire goes back into this tube, which is the one that disappears off back to the zig unit. But actually looking at this look, we have another blue and brown there, which goes off to this fuse box. I suppose that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? To take that uh, fuse box apart and check those fuses. Well that's interesting, we do have a blown fuse. This uh, 15 amp fuse is blown, so I wonder if that could be our problem. I wonder if I've got a, a new one anywhere. <laughs> well, would you believe it, we've got everything but 15. We've got a couple of 30s there. And I've got a pack with 3, 5, 7.5 and 10. So I'm going to have to pop out and get some 15s. Well, would you believe I had to buy a whole selection box of bits and pieces just to get that one fuse? Yes. I guess they're, yeah. Well, yes, yeah, true. They're more interested in selling you an egg sandwich or a cup of latte than uh, actually yeah, be in a garage. They'd be chewy in the sandwich though. Che yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to get myself a brew and then we'll pop that in and put the battery on and see if that makes any difference. Oh, Mr. Ginge is loving this uh, late summer sunshine, aren't you, boy? Yeah. You're having a rare old time out here sunbathing. Just watch your old pink bits, mate. Right, so well, we've now got that fuse replaced in that fuse box there. The battery is back in. Let's start her up and see if we get a charging voltage on this leisure battery. Well, I don't know, that's more than it was, isn't it? Got 12.99 with the engine on. 13 now. I'm just going to try flicking over to the caravan battery and see if that makes a difference. 13.13.1 well, 13 point, 13 is going up slightly all the time. Uh, I think that might have been the problem, you know. Turn the engine off, see what the voltage is with the engine off. Right, so yeah, back to 12.7 again. So I'm going to say we've solved that, you know, that was that blown fuse. And that's probably always been blown since we bought the van. <laughs> and I've just been too lazy to sort it out. Splendid. Anyhow, I'm going to call that. A win, I think. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.